Patia City Expats Club is a non-profit social organisation and our speakers are volunteers. The club as such assumes no responsibility or liability for the professional reputation of or the quality of services provided by the speaker today. something which I thought was very tightly read, called tongue-tied, tied being the Thai language that he's talking about. His name is Graham Rawlings. He's a British guy. Uh, he doesn't live here full-time in, in Thailand, but he shares his time between here and the UK. Uh, and he does that, I think, because he teaches English in the UK as well, so he's certainly a language person. Um, during his uh, life, when he was working in the UK. He was a, a vehicle engineer, motor vehicle engineer, uh, and he spent most of his life doing that. He also qualified to speak English about 20 years ago, when English was spoken properly. <laughs> there was a time, honestly. So, Graham is going to come up here and tell us about the do's and don'ts, the good side and the bad side, of trying to learn the Thai language. Not just to speak, but to read and write. That's the hard part. So, Graham, if you're ready, we go. Give him a big round of applause, please. To your Thank you very much. Storyline. So you're going to go through bit by bit. Uh, is that better? Yes. Okay. I'll have to get really intimate with this microphone. <laughs> okay. And so what I want to do is uh, take you through the storyline of uh, why I decided to learn Thai, uh, good reasons why you shouldn't learn Thai. Uh, parts of the Thai language which I decided to not learn, and the reason why. And you're going to find out bits about the Thai language as I find out about them. So uh, I'm not going to tell you all the intellectual stuff about the Thai language, how many consonants there are, because at the beginning of the story, I didn't know. Uh, uh, to correct some of the uh, little bit about me, I learned French and German at school, and like many people, on my first attempt at trying to do uh, French, when I visited Paris, uh, they didn't understand, they understood exactly what I said, uh, and I couldn't understand what they said because they came back in rapid Parisian French, and the whole idea was that I couldn't understand what they said, and then they decided to talk to me perfectly with English. So I had a very bad experience initially, using students. A very bad experience of my first attempts to uh, use the foreign language. Then my company kept sending me to Germany. However, at school, I had dropped German because it's extremely difficult. Then D and thus, there changes to then, then changes to D, then there are the three cases. Very difficult language to learn German. But they kept sending me there, so I picked it up by listening. Then uh, I decided to discover uh, Thailand. Came over here and was extremely embarrassed that I didn't know the word for toilet, please, or thank you. So this is the story of, of, of my progress. A slight correction to what you heard earlier. Uh, I'm a volunteer in the UK, so I teach uh, <coughs> seven-year-olds <coughs> On a one-to-one -one basis, um, 
I don't teach in front of a class of 30, that's extremely difficult. I just help on a wonderful basis with the slow ones. Next slide, please. Tequila. I think that works better. Yeah. Why bother? When I came to uh, John Dian, I met an English guy who was married to his second wife. He said, Why bother to the time? They can all speak English. Everybody in the world can speak English. That's not strictly true. But he said, Everyone around the world is international. He said, If they can't understand me, I get her to say. She's tired. If I can't understand what they're saying, they talk to her. If I want to talk to them, I tell her, she tells them. No point. Why bother? I decided that that wasn't there. Next slide, please. It's difficult. When I looked at the Thai language, Russian looked easier. Couldn't see any full stops, couldn't see any spaces, couldn't understand the word, and it's difficult. Next one. <coughs> I made the decision I'm going to learn Thai. But how? My first book was evening classes. Did a local internet search. Evening classes. I could find Thai cooking. I could find lessons on Thai massage. Couldn't quite figure out why I would want to learn how to give a Thai massage, but I can't that. Could not find Thai language. So I expanded my search to include London. Next slide, please. <coughs> Sorry, one of the things I also did, we'll come to that in a second, one of the things I also did was I went to my local library and searched for language <coughs> courses. One didn't work for me, very popular. Rosetta Stone. My friend told me about it, ordered it from the library, it didn't work. It might have worked for others, I could not get the hang of it. If, you, if anybody has tried Rosetta Stone, could you put your hand up or something? Or make something with anybody? Oh, okay, thanks, thanks. Um, my friend tried it, put the CDs in the car, couldn't get the hand of it. I was lucky. This one worked. For some reason, this one worked in my brain. I had an old laptop where you put <coughs> CDs in, and it worked. It gave, there was no book, it gave spaces for you to practice what you were listening. So you heard of it, you heard a little bit, then you got the opportunity to copy what you had heard. <coughs> Then you could hear it again to compare, see how you matched up. Then you got another opportunity to have another bash. It worked. Can you play one clip, please? Can we play sample number one? Suppose you're an American woman speaking with a Thai man. How does he ask if you understand Thai? Kun 
Tell him, I understand a little. Ask him where Sukumwik Road is. The gaps that you heard were where you said it. Then you hear what you should have said. Somehow that worked for me. What, how do I remember? There were 30, 30 minutes for each of uh, uh, these, right. two, two sides on each one. I transcribed and wrote down everything I heard. I didn't write it in Thai language. I wrote it in my language. I wrote down what I heard. And it worked. I listened to all CDs and transcribed the conversation on each one. I had a thick set of A4 pages that thick in pencil. Next slide, please. We go from Hong Beng Kun, American, to Hong Jia Bai Ti Chang Wa Chiang Wa Chiang Mai. Chang Krum Ming Krab. Shao Wen Hang Tao Rai Krab. Which is, uh, I'm going to go to uh, 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 Chiang Mai Province. Next, uh, going to go to Chiang Mai Province. Uh, uh, by plane, uh, how long does it take? The second sentence there is on, I checked this morning, it's on disk 25 out of 30. So it goes in the simple, and at each one, it refreshes your memory of what was on the previous disk. So it takes a bit of what you did last time, introduces something new, and so on each time you, you try it, it, it forces you to remember the previous lesson. Next slide, please. These are the things that I deliberately chose not to learn. And why? Days of the week. I wanted to learn conversation. I did not want to read a newspaper. I didn't want to have a political discussion. I mean, you would have come in handy. My objective was conversation only, not legal stuff. And so, written Thai was not a priority. Conversation. And based on the French experience, even if I can make them understand what I'm saying, I need to be able to understand what they're saying back. The word Tuesday doesn't often crop up in conversation. Or Friday. If we can hold it down. <clears throat> February doesn't crop up in conversation very often. Colours. If I want to buy a shirt, I go and choose the colour. I then ask if they've got it smaller or bigger. I don't need to know how to say pink in Thai or green. That was my decision. Why didn't I want to learn written Thai at beginning? Because in my opinion, at that time, that was like learning two languages. I'd have to learn all these chicken heads and symbols and things. It looked like it was doubling the task. Oral was what I was interested in, not the written. Instead, I found out through practicing conversation, if I just learned the word for yesterday, tomorrow, and today, I don't need to learn the word for Wednesday or Friday. Yesterday, we were one. One the twenty. <coughs> Once you've done that, then ah, oh, this week, last week, if you can learn.
none of the words for the previous one, today and next, you can substitute yesterday, last week, last month, last year. It saves you having to figure out how to say 2019 or 2017. <coughs> In time. Sakta, Sakta Ni. Sakta Week. This week, Sakta Ni. In the past, tricky. Let me go to the next slide, please. For one. Tung Ni. One Ni. Tung Ni. Tomorrow. For one. Yesterday. Last week, tricky one. Sakta Ti Leo. Last week. When did you know that? Last week. When did you last visit Thailand? Four years ago. I had to learn the number, a small number of, uh, uh, a few numbers. C, B, T, L. Four years ago. If you learn next, this, and the previous, you can then substitute. Much easier than trying to figure out how to say 2017 or how to remember all seven days of the week plus all 12 months of the year. That was my decision. Next slide, please. I said earlier, I expanded my search. I realized I had a structure of phrases, structured questions and answers, and I still couldn't read the menu. I discovered SOAS in London. <clears throat> the only place I could find that offered a Thai language course. It was very difficult because the, they introduced mid, low, and high level consonants. In my opinion, not appropriate for beginner level. But it gave me a snippet of the, uh, the complexities of the Thai language, how many consonants, how many vowels, and so on. Then when I, that's when I learned about tone blocks and tones. But I had a slightly black. Wandering around, waiting for the classes to start, I saw a notice on the, uh, on the board. If you help me with English, I will teach you Japanese. That's an idea. Language exchange. Hmm. How about if I do one of those? A time. Maybe there are some Thai people here. I can't tell the difference between visually, between Thai, Filipino, Malaysian. I can't tell the difference. So I put up my notice. Stuffed it into the notice boards and I strongly I do not recommend breaking open notice boards and put and spinning somebody else's drawing pins and using it to put your own notice up. That's not preferred. <coughs> so I reply. And so I began uh, <coughs> one to one language exchange. Well, I could practice conversation. I could ask questions. You can't ask questions to a CD. And so once a fortnight, I went up to Earl's Court and decided to have a baby to a cup of coffee in Starbucks. Other coffee shops are available. And uh, made some new friends. Next slide, please. And that's where I learned that there are approximately 44 consonants, more than 12 vowels, many, many vowel combinations, and the vowels go in front, above, below, and behind the consonants. No spaces, no full stops, no question marks. We'll come to that later. Five tones, but four tone marks. Absence of a tone mark is a tone. Tricky. Tricky. So, 
I've got all the CDs in the background. I've got my stock of phrases. I'm now doing a, practicing a bit of one-to-one -one conversation. One of my friends said, watch this. Recom <coughs> recommended uh, Lacan. Very, very good. Next, next slide, please. Ah. Preparation is everything. <coughs> this is an example of, uh, uh, of written time. You can see there that there are no spaces in between. What you can see above What I'm finding out there is one of the valves, just there. That's the toe mark. Valve, toe mark. That's tricky, I'll explain that later. You can see there, no spaces. The first job when you're looking at written time and trying to understand it, in my opinion, is put spaces in between the words. Next slide, please. Here you can see that I've now put spaces in between to separate out the words. The tricky part about this is, if there's a word in there you don't know, is it one word or two? It's tricky. In there, you can see there's subdown, weak. Tilel, two words. Subdown, tilel, last week. Last week. Um, house or home. Glamma, buy is to go. Glamma, come back. So come home. Cow. Cow also means rice. Also is used, used for food. Food being rice. In cow, eat food, eat rice. We'll consider the different tone is he stroke she. She came home last week. He came home last week. Next time. Next time, please. One of my friends said. Watch this, this is good, this is very popular in Thailand. It's an award winning soap opera. I've never heard of it. Thankfully, English subtitles. Approximately 16 episodes with mysterious advertising breaks in the middle something they called INDB. You'll find it on YouTube, but you've got to find a little bit. Excellent. Set in farming country. <coughs> farming country. You'll see these two people here advertising mobile phones and cosmetics. I know him as one of Atit, as Atit, because that's the character he played. I'm sure all the Thai people here recognise this. So, I watched all 16 episodes, didn't write it down, but enjoyed it. Couldn't watch it go without the English subtitles. Then my friend, <clears throat> I watched it twice, and I said to my friend, is there anything else I can do? Or what else can I watch? Next one, please. She said, is this soap opera? Watch it. So I watched it. Couldn't understand the word. All dressed up in strange costumes, curly shows. I don't believe really about history. <coughs> Historical drama. So I wrote back and said, no, I can't watch this. I can't understand the thing. Cora, instead of crap, Cora. More than 75% I couldn't understand. Why watch it? So I said, no, I can't watch it. So then, uh, 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 I watched it again. Really good. 
Okay, send one. Next one, please. So now, I've been practicing, listening, a bit of more than one conversation. Big breakthrough. A conversation with a stranger, not with your teacher. Your teacher will be kind. A conversation with a stranger. Takes nerve. And a background of phrases. I don't know what they're going to reply. I know what I'm going to say, but I don't know what they're going to ask or say. That'll be breakthrough. Took two years. Before I had the nerve. <clears throat> First conversation wasn't necessarily a success, but we moved to another restaurant. Have to have another restaurant that doesn't sell food. It's called the bar. And as long as you put the drink there, someone will talk to you. If you try to do that in the UK into a Thai restaurant, what happens is she takes your water in English and walks away. You can't have that conversation. Here is a much greater opportunity. It worked. Perhaps using Google Translate as a standby for the occasional word. And so small conversations started. I had the nerve to have a conversation. The stranger. Next slide, please. I put this in because I decided to, um, for two reasons. These are useful, small, little useful phrases. Don't worry about the yellow, you're not meant to read the yellow yet. Uh, so don't screw your eyes up. Look at the black first. Useful phrases. And it also illustrates the importance of the location of the word in the phrase. Have you decided there are five, five, five tones? My, 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 my. What you will hear often, look at the top one there. I like my crap. <coughs> Delicious. Question mark. Polite ending. They use the word my as a question mark. It turns a statement into a question. This is delicious, question mark, polite ending. Oh my like crap. That's a man speaking, crap. My is the question mark, delicious, question mark. Is it delicious? The answer, of course, if your partner has cooked the meal, is yes, it is delicious. All right, crap. It should be there, isn't it? <laughs> Don't say the next one. <laughs> My array. Not delicious. Let's show that clip over here. The position of the word "my" in front means negative. It doesn't mean no. It means negative. Not delicious. But that ending is a lady talking. If you cooked it for her, she would be too polite to say this, but she might be tempted to say, my array, not delicious. In that position, there is the question mark. <coughs> Down here as well. Don't like crap, which is can, question mark, polite ending. You take your broken phone, to uh, Tukkong, and you hold up two pieces of your mobile phone, you could look up the word repair or fix, but you could just hold up two pieces of your phone and say, down my cup. Can you? And he will repeat, if, it's, if he can, he will say, crap, or can, die, crap. If it's really bad, Mother, ka, cannot, but it's not can. The negative, not can. Not hungry, sorry, not delicious, sorry.
This is one all of us will hear. Here am I. Here am I. Cap, are you hungry? Hungry? Question mark. Polite ending. A lady is asking you if you are hungry. I'm sure that there are some guys here that hear that phrase from time to time. <coughs> if you are hungry, the answer is fuel. So you just remove the question mark, the word, the question word. If you're not hungry, which is what I say most of the time, my you? What do you, if you can go to the next, oh, sorry. Stop, sorry. There are some occasions where you don't have to use the question marker, the question. You might, are you hungry? Question mark, don't have to. For example, if the question is what or where or why, then it is by its nature. If you included that, it is a question. Hold that beauty like that. Where is where is the question? Where are the toilets? Where are the toilets? Located where? Where? T9. If you're going to include T9, where? You don't have to use the question word my to turn it into a question. But you're asking where. Next slide. Here you can see the Thai characters more clearly, and you can see that it's spelt differently. my up there. That's the vowel in front. I'll explain who here. Impressions and answers at the end. That's a tricky one. And you can see there's a tone mark up there. Above the M. That's the vowel I. Next slide, please. Ah. So I've got my conversations, and now I'm having those conversations, and I now decide I want to have a handbag on my own, uh, not just talking to a stranger, but sort of ad hoc. If you're in Germany, and I know there's some German speakers here, and you've ordered yourself a beer, and you want one more beer, if you ask a Thai person or a German person, how do you say one more beer, they say, uh, I'm beer bitter, or something like that. If you sit, like I did, as a sad business traveller, sitting alone in uh, uh, the Hof in Cologne, with a, a big guy, uh, uh, a big uh, 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 beer seller, and listen to the others, you will hear, he doesn't say, one beer. He says, if he wants his second beer, he said nervously, looking up all the German speakers, noch eins, more, one, one more. I wanted to say, one more beer for my second beer. And I heard somebody, every time uh, you get to the, uh, the beer, and get to a certain angle, the lady says, one more. I wanted to say that in time. On one occasion, a lady said, Oh my God, I forgot it. Oh my God. There's the question. There's the polite ending. If I want one more, the missing word is there. Got it. Oh my God. So if I want to order one more before she notices, got it. Oh, come. Went to the next restaurant, got halfway down, didn't want another beer, but I thought I'll order one now, got it. So I said proudly, with confidence. Ow. Oh. Blank look. <laughs> Ow. Clock. So I pointed at the beer. She said, you want one more? Yes. The jury is still out on that one. <laughs> but the mistakes don't matter. We'll cover it later. Next time, please. I had run out 
out of the cause. My friends have gone back to Thailand. I've gone through the CDs. That's it. So I looked up on the, uh, I looked up, I need more exposure to the Thai language. To all the people here who are not Thai, anybody who is not Thai, know the title of this. Okay. Bangkok traffic love story. Very famous film. Very good. With English subtitles. Next slide, please. And watch this one. For nothing. Excellent film. I find thank you. Again, English subtitles. Practicing listening. Next slide, please. One of my favourites. It's called The Teacher's Bow. Absolutely loved it. Sitting in a school in a remote area with a, it's a floating school in a poor area. Get done with the yard. Which is a bit uh, difficult because get done with the yard doesn't mean the teacher's diary. Get done with the yard means to miss school, to miss high school. Next slide, please. We skip this slide, please. And the next. And the next. In putting this presentation together, I thought, what are the most, what do academics say? What are the most common mistakes that we make? when we're learning time. Next one. Not listening enough. My sister is just about to start Spanish lessons because she's decided to spend Spain in the winter. She's going on a eight-week course. Because for the rest of the time, in the UK, we don't hear much Spanish, we don't hear much Thai. We don't get exposure to foreign languages very much, apart from the Chinese takeaway in the Indian restaurant. So when we try to learn a foreign language, we don't get enough exposure at listening, which is why I couldn't understand what the French guy said in Paris when I was 16. Next, please. Lack of curiosity. You have to be curious. You have to want to know. If somebody sends you to evening classes by force, you're not going to pick up much. This was a study done in Canada, where, I would say citizens, I can't remember the details of the study, they were forcibly sent to learn French. If you force somebody to sit in a French class, they're not going to take it in very much. When you're at school and you're forced to do French or German, your mind is elsewhere a lot of the time. Next, please. Accept ambiguity, rigid thinking. Don't think rigidly. Next, please. Don't use a single method. I had a phrase book. Couldn't get on with it, threw it away. I went on a course. My sister's going to go on a Spanish course. Give it a try. Couldn't get on with it. Tried some CDs, I tried Rosetta Stone, didn't like it, didn't get on with me, I didn't get on with it. So to use multiple methods, multiple methods. Next please. Fear of mistakes. Don't worry if you get it wrong. You might be, uh, there was a presentation a few weeks ago about being scared to raise somebody because you might be doing it the wrong way and not giving sufficient respect if you don't put your hands up enough in the wrong place. Is she older? Is she younger? What do I call her? I'll tell you what, I won't bother because I won't get it wrong. The mistakes don't matter. They will look at your face, see that you're a fine, and they will accept and adapt. The Thai people are friendly. 
and understanding. They will appreciate you having a, <coughs> that you're having a go. If you order your second beer and get the tones wrong, because if there are two words together, each one has got five possible tones, that sounds to me like 25 possible combinations. If you were a pessimist, you would say, well, I've got a 1 in 25 chance of getting it correct, so I won't bother. If you get it wrong, then you're ordering your second beer, or asking for the bill, and you accidentally tell the waiter that you miss him, because kidung sounds very much like kidung, um, he won't come back and give you a kiss or bring you a bag of cement instead. He will understand that you made a slight tonal error. It doesn't matter. But that fear often stops us. Next, please. A study was done on second language acquisition. When we are trying to study, uh, 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 study a second language, acquire a second language, the first part, according to Crusher, is the silent period. Listening to what others around are saying. The little boy next to me, uh, he, uh, he, uh, two and a half years old, he listens to his sisters and copies them, listens to mum and dad, copies them. But the first thing he does for the first two years is he listens. This listening period, this silent period, can take up to six months. That's six months of listening to the foreign language before you even attempt it. The next stage is early production. Short phrases. One to two words. This can take six to twelve months. After six months of silence, you'll be coming up with some phrases of one or two words. Next one. Oh, sorry. Speech emergence is the next stage. Simple phrases and answers, often with grammatical errors, and this stage takes one to three years. After three years, you are still making grammatical errors. What about that 10 week course my sister's doing in Spanish? The next stage, intermediate fluency. Using more complicated sentences, giving your thoughts and opinions, the ability to give your thoughts and opinions, but still includes frequent errors at three to five years. Frequent errors, still three to five years. I didn't know this when I started. I found out and I put this presentation together. Advanced fluency, the last stage, being close to a native speaker, five to ten years. If you do an internet search, and you search to learn Thai, and instead of the normal way, you go to the next one, images. I did. I couldn't include it because I only discovered it the other week, uh, the other day. Learn Thai in four hours. <laughs> My screen was plastered with images of courses where you can learn Thai in four hours or three hours. <laughs> Next slide, please. Next. So, how difficult is time? I thought whilst putting this presentation together. Because that did not occur to me four years ago when I started. 
I decided I'm going to learn Thai. Not can I, it's not meant to sound arrogant, I'm just being honest. I didn't think, can I? I decided, I'm going to. I had no idea how difficult it was going to be. I'm very glad I did it, but I didn't know in advance how difficult it was going to be. But I thought, I wonder how difficult it is compared to others. This is a study done by the US Navy. It's very widely quoted on the internet. We have to be careful how we phrase the question. Not how difficult is Thai if you're Korean. Not how difficult is Thai as a second language if you are Egyptian. It's how important, how difficult is it for English speakers? If you're an English speaker, they decided to categorise the foreign languages in levels of difficulty, the US Navy did. And they decided that if you're an English speaker, the easiest ones to learn are French and Italian, if English is your first language. It doesn't surprise me that German is more difficult. If you look at category four, Khmer and Thai and Russian. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty difficult if you're an English speaker, yes. What surprised me was that Greek is there. Considering the number of people in the UK that got Greek holidays and probably try to attend some language training, I wonder if they realise the challenge they're taking on. And I'm not surprised to see that Chinese and Japanese is right in the most difficult. Because um, when I first started, I didn't know Thai was a terrible language. I didn't have a clue. I know I couldn't understand it. I didn't know why I couldn't understand it. It's a terrible language. But so apparently are Chinese and Japanese. So this, when you're attempting to learn a foreign language, yes. French, Italian, and German are the easiest. And it's not surprising that time is difficult. Next slide, please. So, in summary, next please. What, what were my biggest influences? Next please. The CDs, without question, the biggest. I could stop, replay, start, replay, play them through twice, lots and lots and lots of practice with copying. Copying what I heard, matching what I heard to what I should have said, and then tried again and again and again. I did approximately uh, one hour per day, probably five days a week. Took a long time. Next, please. Key influence was language exchange. The ability to ask questions. If you are, have a phrase book in front of you and you don't understand what you're reading, or you can't read the tone parts because they all look the same because they're in micro print, you can't ask the book a question. You need a native speaker to be able to talk to and say, how do I tell the difference between blah blah, blah and blah blah blah? Because they look the same. Because they don't. <clears throat> or two characters look the same. Really important. Next please. And how does this address the learning errors that we commonly make? Not listening enough. Not surprisingly, my biggest influences were me listening. Listening to the CD, listening to the native speakers, asking questions. Even though I was in the UK when I was listening to the CDs and doing the language exchange, language exchange in London. Lack of curiosity. I was curious. Yes, I was curious. Single method. I did not use a single method. So by accident, I did pretty well with choosing a <coughs> the methods I used 
seems to fit pretty well with uh, addressing some of the most common errors that we make. And I didn't find that out until I put this presentation together, which I should have done. Next slide, please. What do you help? through your 10 years yet. <laughs> Question and answers. Uh, would you like to come back on stage? Question. Where is John? John's over there. Gentleman there. Oh. Hi, Graham. Thanks very much. Very interesting. Um, I must commend you, actually. I've been trying to learn Thai since I first came here in 2001, and I still can't read a line of Thai, so fantastic effort of yours to try and overcome that very difficult problem. Um, I just thought I'd mention that, um, personally, I'm, ta I'm taking a long time to understand how YouTube is an incredible, infinite resource of everything. And I've been looking at some Thai language lessons on YouTube, and they come in all levels, in all situations, and that's probably, in the modern world, one of the easiest ways to get that kind of listening experience you talked about. And one of the films that you had on, um, funny title, uh, what's it, I Miss You, Thank You, Love You, something like that. I find thank you. Yeah, I saw that in the cinema a few, week, a few years ago here, but it's also on Netflix, I've found. And, and, and in fact, if you type in Thai movies to let Netflix do a search, you'll come up with a bunch of Thai movies and Thai lacquer as well. Ah, so that's okay. another Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, so that's, yes, using the internet is uh, an excellent way of getting that listening practice. And any more questions? Uh, yes. <laughs> Do you think that reading Thai would help you? I made, I believe, <clears throat> I decided not to do them in parallel. In reading little bits of time now helps me with my pronunciation and getting it right. I prefer, I would recommend that we do the listening and speaking first and then pick up bit by bit as you need it the, the written time. If you're, because that was my objective. If your objective is to read a newspaper, and that's the reason why you're doing it, then sure, concentrate on the, on, on the writing. But um, I picked up the language, uh, the written language, somebody gave me the book. However, some of those are obsolete. And so the children in schools are, you, are taught the letters of the alphabet, including the obsolete ones, which aren't used anymore. So that's why I decided, another reason why I did it in the order I did. But being able to read a little bit of time has come into the second place. It, it does help, but it would have been slowing me down at the beginning. That was my opinion. Um, back here. Um, I'm, I'm going to disagree with you on uh, what you're saying about uh, learning Thai. Um, everybody learns differently, and I'm a visual learner, and I can't hear the tones. I can only hear two of the five tones. And because there's so many vowels and consonants that don't exist in English, you cannot write it in English. So I've been working on the Thai alphabet, and if I can see a word written in Thai, I can say it correctly. But if I hear it, I can't duplicate it. So everybody works. Yeah, I have a different ability, whereas I'm pretty good at copying, but I didn't want to double my task. Um, the tone, um, I was able to copy the tones by copying what I was listening. Um, 
when Thai children are taught Thai, uh, I don't believe they are told that there are five different tones. They are, they are shown the three letters and say that consonant, that vowel, with that above, sounds like this, copy it. So it would have inhibited me. Um, the, the CDs certainly, because, it, there, were, because there was no book, um, on those CDs, they did not practice the tones. You simply copied what you had. But that, I'm just, uh, it, by all means, there are different ways of learning, and we all learn in different ways. Uh, yes, uh, I went to Thai school uh, to all the courses, reading and writing, and uh, I got pretty good at it for a while, but then if you don't keep up on it, I found out you, you start forgetting uh, yes. the, the alphabet and the tones and all yes. this. And, but listening does make a big difference. And uh, uh, the Thais don't hesitate to correct you if you're wrong, you know. And you, so you, you shouldn't be offended by it. You know. Yes, you're correct. You can tell by when you, the, the blank face uh, on, on the Thai person is normally the clue that you've got one of the tones significantly wrong. But <laughs> that, 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 the, the fear of getting it wrong is one of the key reasons why we don't bother. Yes, um, I've been here many years, and I do speak uh, Thai probably at a number four level. And I have a question for you. Sure. Maybe you don't know. I just found out a couple of years ago. The Thai word, when they describe the northeast, they say isan. If the word north and east in the Thai language doesn't show up in that phrase. Do you know what that phrase is? No, no. It's Khmer, pure Khmer. Most times will not know that also. Did you have a question? <laughs> no, I was just making a speech. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to ask you a question I always ask people who's, who uh, try to learn Thai. Have you ever heard of a Fidel chart? F-I-D-E-L chart. Look it up on the internet. Okay. When you're learning uh, with Thai, it really helps you learn the, um, the alphabet and, and the vowels and so forth. Someday I'll bring one and show people. <laughs> it's, 
that this presentation was about more, uh, focusing on spoken time, not the written time. Uh, point of information on the Pimsleur course. Yes. Uh, you can now get that on audible.com as a single audiobook, the entire course. Oh. So it's a, and you can carry it around on your phone, listen to it anywhere. Oh, thank so you. that's very convenient. Yes, yes. Um, when I first came to Thailand, uh, no Thai, of course, um, but found that um, the big cities obviously were easy to go to live in because people could communicate with you. Uh, but up in the villages, very, very different. But I had this uh, friend that I worked with uh, in, in the Middle East, and he had been to a school outside of Thailand and, and uh, had done Thai courses and everything else, and he would speak to me in Thai, oh, wow, it sounded really good. But I discovered that when we went into places, nobody understood what he said. <laughs> I mean, they really did. They'd look at him and then they'd say, as you said in English, what did you really want? <laughs> and so I thought, well, I'd ask him why it didn't work. And he said, I have no musical ear. And I said, ah. But I do. I learned music when I was young, and I can hear the differences in the tones that they're saying. So I started literally just copying them. Now it may be poor Thai, as you said over there, but they understand it because they, this is the type that uses street Thai, and it's very useful in places like Pattaya. I don't want to be on television telling the news and being absolutely, utterly correct. But street Thai is really good. If, if there are no more. Question ah, I'd like to include one last one of the extras, if I may, after this particular time. Where is learning Spanish while on your scale of difficulty? For an English language speaker, I think it's pretty easy. Because, number one, you can read everything. Secondly, there's lots of crossover between English and Spanish. And if you remember the list, uh, so, um, if Spanish wasn't on there, it would be at number one or number two because of its Spanish and Italian are so similar. Maybe go to uh, Loom for Lent, if we have, if we have time. Maybe go for on your slide. Loom for Lent, if we might. If we might. I want to do an experiment. It's in, should be one of the extras. Ah. If you'll indulge me. We've all heard the expression, fly at lice. When I looked at the Thai alphabet, there is a letter R and a letter L. If there's a letter R and a letter L, why do they say, fly at lice? I like a puzzle. So I discussed this. Uh, now, I had a look at the book, and I, then I got some Thai speakers, uh, a Thai friend of mine, to explain, to, uh, to demonstrate. And I'm going to demonstrate to you. These are the two letters I'm talking about, Lo Ling and Ro Ru. Ling is a monkey. That is the L that you can see up there. That's the letter L sound law. Law Li. Ro Ru. If they've got the letter R and the letter L, why can't they say rice? Rock and roll. And so and loom for lead. Why? What are we experiment? I'm going to deliberately obscure my face, just my mouth. Lo le, ro ru, lo le, ro ru, lo le, ro lo lo, lo, ro, lo, ro, lo. Lo me, ro, ro, lo, 
wrong. They don't say raw by pursing the lips. It's rolled. Wrong, 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 wrong. They are saying they are, but they can't hear it. Because of the, because of the way they pronounce the R. It's rolled. And they don't purse the lips. That's why they can't hear it. They ask in the R. It took me a while to figure that out. Rolling, ro, ru, ro, ru. They don't move the lips in the Euthanasia R. You know, I just wanted to add that. because it is the correct language. Whereas the ordinary person in the street doesn't, so I would equate that maybe to Cockney, something like that in English. Yes. Uh, there are pronunciation differences in English, uh, regional differences, which are absolutely correct. That, that, that could very well be the reason why. Uh, but generally speaking, when I am with the people that are talking to me, I'm not a politician level. They are a bit lower down the scale. And so I just wanted to under try to figure out why I was hearing what I was saying. But that sounds very plausible. Yeah, please. <laughs> this word, um, darling. Yes. My lady was saying, darling. What was that mean? Uh, I th I love. Uh, I have a possible answer. Uh, uh, Lord Ling, the, the Ling uh, uh, part of Darling. Thai people have a tendency they don't enunciate final consonants. Um, and as in Thai language, it's partially enunciated, but not fully enunciated. So it's only being barred. It's barred. But they won't get the last part, so they don't enunciate it. It makes it really difficult for us as listeners when most of those final consonants, when they pronounce English, are missing. So it could be that she's emphasising that to help you. There might be another explanation, but that's just not possible. Yes, yeah, uh, did, did you have trouble pronouncing the word snake? Uh, <laughs> yes, I did. More no. That's a very difficult one. Yes, uh, I did. I did have trouble. To be able to put that NG at the beginning is difficult. Yes. Sorry? Yes, uh, yes I, I did have trouble doing difficulty with it. And some of the vowels are particularly difficult. Um, for example, they have vowels that we don't have. For example, for uh, friend. Poon. You have to put what a what does Thai person say? Poon. And that the corners of the mouth are pulled right back there into a massive it, it's, it's difficult and uncomfortable for us. Poon. That's that particular vowel, so that uh, is tricky for us to practice. Mongu is difficult, yes. Sorry, I just have to come in and, and uh, answer to the guy who asked about the, uh, the vowel at the end of the of the uh, word. That's one thing that the Fidel chart helps you with, because basically what happens is in Thai there are a list of I think about oh probably ten or fifteen letters that regardless of how they're spelled, when they're at the end of the word or the end of the syllable, they're pronounced, for example, like a like you said, this kind of swallowing the T. For example, Christmas comes out Christmas. 
because the Thais, whenever they see the letter S at the end of a vowel, it's pronounced like a swallow T. And there's a whole string of those. And then there's a whole string of them that are pronounced like a ba at the end. So, yeah, you're absolutely correct. I found that as well. That's why I decided uh, reading time is particularly difficult. And I didn't want to include too much of that here. But if anybody has attempted to learn to read Thai, you can't trust the final consonant. Um, um, it might, whatever it is written is not necessarily how it's pronounced. And I think that may be what you're referring to. But uh, that wasn't part of this presentation, but I agree with you. Those final consonants are particularly difficult. OK. Thank you, Will. Yeah. Thank you.